If the Broncos are rebuilding, is it time to trade Cortland Sutton? That's the question on the DNVR Broncos mailbag that we're breaking down. Henry, what do you say? No, because you're rebuilding around Bo Nix, the quarterback who needs a receiver. Um, I think if, if in a different world in which you didn't draft a quarterback this year, then yeah, it would make a lot of sense. But I don't know that you can totally be rebuilding when you already have, like you're building now, you know, like you're, you, you got your quarterback. The, the plan needs to be trajectory up the rest of the way. Like there's no more like we need to go down from here because otherwise you just, why would you have wasted that pick on a quarterback? So this question comes in from Kyle D5280 who says, don't get me wrong. Cortland Sutton is my second favorite Broncos receiver in my lifetime. God bless number 88 Demarius Thomas. Court's end zone catches last season were some of the most electric and technical catches with zero margin of error in the league that season. That said, if the Broncos are truly rebuilding and they already let Cortland's debatable defensive counterpart and Justin Simmons go for nothing, then we need every bit of draft capital they can get. Waiting a season just invites unnecessary risk of a dip in performance or, knock on wood, injury. When it's a, while it's a tough pill to swallow, I think it's best to trade Cortland Sutton and let this season be the Tim Patrick year. P.S., uh, is Tim Patrick recovered yet? Has he caught passes from Bo Nix? Yes, Tim Patrick is recovered fully. He was catching passes from Bo Nix, Zach Wilson, and Jared Stidham at the Broncos' uh, first week of OTAs last week. He looks like he's 100% ready to go out of expect. He's 100% ready. There's one change with Tim Patrick, though. He's wearing number 12, mm -hmm. and you're going to get confused because Devon Vele, the Broncos rookie receiver, is wearing 81, and he looks so much like Tim Patrick, that exact same build, same characteristics on the field. So look for Tim Patrick wearing number 12. Uh, and I do see what, what uh, our friend is saying in the mailbag, Henry, because I agree. When you look at, like, Tim Patrick, or when you look at Cortland Sutton and Justin Simmons, mm -hmm. Justin Simmons, like – an even better player like he has more accolades uh than Cortland Sutton and with Cortland Sutton they're both high price guys if mm -hmm. you move on from them trade them cut them I mean they cut Justin Simmons right when they made that move it was like man okay what are we doing right now we the Broncos are rebuilding mm -hmm. and to rebuild sometimes you got to make some really uncomfortable moves and I think actually moving on from Justin Simmons would be a more uncomfortable move than moving on from Cortland Sutton like if you're just talking about wins then probably but it's not what like, it's no, all about. no, it is not. Mm. It is about making Bo Nix good. Like it doesn't matter. Like you could get rid of the entire defense if you wanted. Like if you want, don't put, even put anybody on the field, but keep the opportunities open for Bo Nix to succeed. Like that's that's what this is all about. And you just you already are really really lacking any sort of weapon right now. Um, and so like you you just I, I don't see the risk even. Like the risk is you give him the whatever the twelve. The $13 million that you have to give him to keep him this year, um, that's the only risk. Like, you could cut him after the season. I know he could get hurt, but if he gets hurt, could you cut him by the beginning of the season? Like, if, if he really did have, like, an injury at the end of December, that would suck because that, in theory, could wrap all the way around. But even if he was ready by November, you could cut him in November after playing half the games and only pay him half the salary. And at the end of the day that sort of risk is just one to me that it, it doesn't even factor into the equation. So you say you have to surround Bo Nix with, with talent. I agree with you that mm -hmm. Corton Sutton would be indispensable after trading Jerry mm -hmm. Judy. If they didn't make two pretty significant moves at the receiver position this offseason, they went out and paid Josh Reynolds, what, $7 million this year, I believe mm -hmm. is what he's getting. That is a significant investment in the receiver room. I mean, that's he's your number two highest paid receiver right now, just Yours, instantly. Yeah. So you made a, a significant investment in your receiver room with Josh Reynolds. Uh, and then you also, a fourth round pick, you traded up in the fourth round to get Troy Franklin, who's not just like a fourth round pick that had a lot of production. He's also Bo Nix's guy. And then you have Marvin Mims too. So I think those two additions this off season, coupled with everything else you have in that receiver room, uh, I don't think it's like Cortland Sutton is absolutely necessary. Is he your best receiver on the team right now? Yes. But is it where if you don't have him, you have nothing? No, because I am factoring Tim Patrick being healthy because he's healthy right mm -hmm. now. He has had two really unfortunate season-ending injuries, and who knows, maybe his body at 
what, 29, 30 years old is just completely worn down and, and he's not going to be the player he is. I'm not ready to believe that about Tim yet. I think when he was on the field, when he's healthy, um, th- there was a reason that when the Broncos traded for Russell Wilson, it was pretty clear behind the scenes that Tim Patrick was Russell Wilson's favorite target in the offseason in the beginning of training camp. There's a reason for that. The Broncos coaches like Tim Patrick with Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, and Tim Patrick on the team three years ago. They liked Tim Patrick. The coaches did the most of that entire group. There's a reason the quarterback and the coaching staff like Tim Patrick that much behind the scenes. Again, two season-ending injuries ago, um, that was the that was the case. So I believe in Tim Patrick. If he's healthy, can be a guy. So you have Tim Patrick. I want Marvin Mims on the field. He needs to be on the field uh, 90% of plays. He needs to just step up and place a Jerry Judy and be on the field. So Tim Patrick's a guy that can be on the field. Marvin Mims is a guy that should be on the field every down. And then you're not paying Josh Reynolds $7 million to sit on the bench. So right there, there's three starting receivers for you, and that's not going out too much on a limb. And then for depth, you have Troy Franklin, who uh, who knows? Maybe he has a breakout season as a rookie, especially with being Bo's guy. And then you also have other good depth there. Henry, one of your favorite guys you like to talk about is Lil Jordan Humphrey because of what he can do uh, is not just a receiver but also as a blocker. Brandon Johnson showed a lot of promise, so... I don't think you absolutely have to have Cortland Sutton. And would it be great to have him? And then Tim Patrick is just depth on the bench? Of course. But I think there might be some signs pointing to the Broncos being a little more open to this than they would have been two months ago after getting uh, Josh Reynolds and after getting Troy Franklin in the draft. I totally disagree that those are big investments. Those are, to me, such tiny investments. Like a two-year... $9 $9 million contract that's less than half guaranteed. I can't get to big investment there. Same thing with the fourth round draft pick. Like to me, those are like, those, I, I I think for, for those two, I guess a fourth round draft pick that, that almost always makes the roster, but a guy you give that contract to as a receiver, that's not even like a roster guarantee. Like in terms of Josh like, Reynolds, and if oh, you he's just, a roster guarantee. Oh no, he is himself, but yes. in terms of the contract, that contract doesn't just mean like, you're set and forget on the team. Um, Cause I mean, that's not, I think that, I think that actually is a fringe top 70 receiver contract, but just barely. So, but on your team right now, yeah, he's no, the no, no, second no. highest paid receiver. He is, he is number two on your team. Yeah. But in terms of like, that's big what we're, talking about. we're talking about this team, but I just can't get to that being big investment. Like it's just it's such a small amount of money. Um, so to me again, like Josh Reynolds, he got an opportunity to start, He's he put up 628 yards in a really good offense, and I. If that's not the ceiling, that's awesome for the Broncos. But for a 29 year old receiver, like that probably is what he is, and that's a valuable piece for sure. But you, it's not. It's certainly not a game changer. Like there's just there's just nobody you can trust except Cortland out there, and for that reason like you just have to keep him but see that's when when we talk about rebuilds and let's hear from sean payton in just a second you hear if you mm-hmm. want to get that dialed up when you talk about rebuilds you are moving on from mm-hmm. things that are the sure thing justin simmons was as sure of a thing mm-hmm. as you could get from that safety spot he was as reliable he was as trustworthy you knew he was gonna get what five interceptions every mm-hmm. single year he was going to be a leader you had that on the defensive side of the ball But when you rebuild, you do have to tear things down and kind of get rid of those guys so that you can have the Caden Stearns, the P.J. Locks, the Brandon Joneses get a bigger opportunity and shine. So I view it very similar as our commenter and saying, man, if if Justin Simmons isn't safe, Cortland Sutton Mm -hmm. isn't safe. I'm not saying just get rid of him, but I see these moves the Broncos have made in the offseason surrounding the wide receiver spot. I see the moves they've made on their roster to kind of tear things down in order to build it up. And I just think like, man, if Justin Simmons is expendable, Cortland Sutton, uh, I would think is as well, especially for not showing up at OTAs. And if he shows up at mandatory minicamp, uh, it's probably not going to mean much Mm -hmm. because he only missed the voluntary stuff. Um, Like what him missing all this time is probably not going to mean much, but if he doesn't show up at mandatory minicamp, then does that change things? Um, it, it'll be interesting. Yeah. So there's two things. The first is all the receivers are going to have plenty of opportunities. Like, I don't think you're blocking Marvin Mims um, just because of the way Sean Payton uses the receivers. Like, they just come in waves. Yep. Like, you rotate, you rotate, you rotate. And so, like, he's not getting 90% of the snaps regardless. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Michael Thomas 
didn't hit 90% of the snaps because you just rotate, rotate, rotate. They all do different things and you have the different packages. Um, the other thing is, uh, oh, what was it? Cortland. Oh, the difference between Cortland and Justin. We already talked about it, but the difference is Bo Nix. Like you can, if, if the defense is a bottom five defense in the NFL next year, is what it is. Like nobody's expecting a playoff team. You can you build from there. If Bo Nix has a bad season, you're in really rough shape as a franchise. If Bo Nix has a good season, you're in really good shape as a franchise. And so you just have to do everything you can to to help Bo Nix. And getting rid of the one starting receiver on your roster, maybe even like starting skill position player on your roster, you just can't do it. To me, there is. I find it so hard to believe that Cortland Sutton is the difference between Bo Nix being great and like your future guy and him not being your guy. Really? If, if Cortland Sutton is that big of a difference, he wants a new contract, you give him whatever he wants right now. If Cortland Sutton's going to take your rookie quarterback from being bad to being good or being bad to being great, you give him $30 million a year. And that's why I don't think the Broncos are going to do that. That's why I don't think any team's going to do that is because I don't think that he is a good player. He had the fourth most receiving touchdowns in the mm-hmm. NFL last year with 10. That's really good. But I don't know if any wide receiver in the NFL, not just court, any receiver is taking a bad quarterback and making them good. And if so, you pay that guy $30 million this year. I think we saw it with Amari Cooper last year with the Browns, with Joe Flacco. Um yeah, I mean, like, I, it's not so extreme black and white. It's more so just what gives the quarterback a better chance to succeed. Having the, the arguable MVP of the team last year at receiver certainly helps him. And if that costs you $13 million, I don't, I don't care about $13 million. Like, it but is again, what it he is. Wants, he wants more. It's well, we not talk, just like, the contract that he's on. Now. But he'll come back. Like, he's not, he's not going to not play. Fair. Okay, so let's hear from Sean Payton. He was asked last week after Cortland mm-hmm. missed the first week of OTAs uh, where things stand and how his feelings are with Cortland missing OTAs. Here's what Sean Payton had to say. There isn't any concern. Here's why. I, I know Cortland well. He's, he's a tremendous worker. You guys know him. Uh, a tremendous makeup leader of our team. Um, that'll sort itself out. That'll sort itself out. I'm curious yep. to know when Sean says that. Is he thinking, like, I've already told George to pay him whatever he needs to be paid to come back here? Or is he thinking, Corton's not going to miss out on $13 million this year? No. He's going to show up, and it's going to sort itself out. But Sean kind of took that question and ran with it a different way. He ran with it in, like, the I'm not concerned about Cortland, essentially saying, like, I know Cortland's working out right now. He's going to be in good shape when he shows up. I have no concerns about that. Cortland is definitely going to be in great shape. Mm-hmm. We see it on his Instagram stories that he is working out. I have no concern about that. It's more so the longer term picture of where things stand. Not is Cortland going to show up for training camp in shape? Of, of course he is. Yeah. Oh no, it'll be fine when he shows up. And I don't, I don't see a world in which he doesn't show up for training camp. Like he'll be there. Man, you rarely see holdouts truly turn into holdouts. We saw it last year with Chris Jones, but that was extremely rare. Yeah, so. well, you see holdouts from really good players. Like, you see Chris Jones or Le'Veon Bell or Vaughn Miller or Chris Harris. Like, Cortland Sutton has been to one Pro Bowl. Like, he's not, he's not in a situation where he can just say, you need to reset the market or anything like that. It's, he's he's going to show up. Guys in his situation almost always show up. Yep. And Henry, you show yep. up. We show up. The comments show up. If you want your comment read on the mailbag, leave it over at thednbr.com on this post. Appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you next week, and we'll see you this week on the podcast. We all silly like the mayor. 